Welcome to CIS 133Y, Python Programming 1. And I'd like to start with a quick walkthrough through the course shell and our expectations this term. So starting from the Desire to Learn homepage, you should see a link for CIS 133Y. I'm going to go ahead and click on that to visit the course homepage. You should see a welcome message um, that includes information on getting started. And in particular, if you haven't taken a course in Desire to Learn before, you might want to start with the Intro to Online Learning under the Content tab. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Content tab from the course homepage. And you should see um, under Table of Contents, there's Support and Resources. And this will take you through how to use D2L Brightspace, which is our learning management system, where to find help, and so on. Um, for anybody who has already taken a course in Desire to Learn, the best place to start is in this course information module, well, where you will see information about me as your instructor. You'll find the course syllabus that includes important information about the course um, and the course schedule. So let's start with the course syllabus. And included in the course syllabus is a lot of background information for the course, including what we're going to cover this term, um, set of topics, the required textbook, which is currently Merax Python programming. Any edition will work, but this is a pretty cheap book. Um, the software we'll be using this term, so we're going to be using the Python programming language as well as PyCharm Professional Edition, which is a free download. And we'll also be looking at some code examples on Ruplet. Um, technical expectations for the course and various things about accessibility, accessibility standards, instructional approach. Weekly course structure, it includes each week there's going to be a module overview which discusses what we're going to be covering in the week. There are going to be lessons on the actual course content for the week. There's um, a lab, not quite every week, but pretty close to every week there's a lab. Um, and these are hands-on exercises that are going to be worth most of your score. Most of your final grade is going to be based on the lab. Um, there are also small weekly quizzes that you can use to check your knowledge. Um, and finally, there's a summary at the end. So you should be visiting the course um, shell um, every week and be sure to check the course homepage for any announcements. They will be appearing on a week by week basis. In the first week, you are expected to participate in a number of ways. So first, you should be posting in the introduce yourself discussion. Um, you'll also be looking for a study group. So some of the exercises in the course shell um, are collaborative, and so you'll want to find a study group that you can work with. Um, it's possible to succeed completely on your own, but, um, but you will get some advantage by partnering up with at least one other person. There's a course information quiz, and you need to get 100% on the course information quiz to unlock the course content. Um, so that's an important requirement, but it's mostly just factual knowledge that you'll get from reading the syllabus and course calendar. Um, complete and submit the first lab, which is installation. So you're going to be installing the development environment for the rest of the term and taking a screen capture of that. Um, and then submit quiz one. So try to do that all before the weekend so that I can mark no-shows and you won't get marked as a no-show inadvertently. Most of the rest of the things that you'd be interested in as a student are the grading criteria for the course. So the grading scheme is really straightforward. 80% is going to be based on the labs that you do, um, which are, as I said, mostly hands-on programming exercises, and 20% will be on the weekly quizzes. Um, and that's it. Um, grading scale is usual. Um, so about the makeup policy, um, it says that uh, late quiz submissions will not be accepted. Um, let me know if you run into a situation where you absolutely can't complete the quiz on time. And I can probably give you special access to complete the quiz even after the deadline. 
Um, it says that uh, labs will be graded within one week of the due date and feedback will be posted on the assignment. Um, I'm going to try to do that, but um, I may fall behind because um, that's actually pretty ambitious. Um, but we'll, we'll try to do that. Um, but I have an open resubmission policy, and so all the way up until the end of the class, if you want to submit your lab late or you want to resubmit it for additional credit, um, I will be accepting late submissions and resubmissions all the way until the end of the term. So, um, so if you need any help or you have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to send me email, and we can either talk about it in email or we can set up a meeting time on Zoom and work on it together. Um, last, um, last date for submitting your work is, um, actually, I'm going to make this week 10. So week 10 of the class on Friday. Um, that's to give me enough time to finish grading and filing the final grade. So try to meet that deadline. Once again, if that turns out to be a problem for anybody, don't hesitate to send me email and we can talk about it. Um, and then uh, most of the other stuff that you need is in the course calendar. So let's go ahead and skip over to that. So every week um, there's going to be a new module release. Week one, we're going to do some installation and we're going to um, review what hopefully we've already learned in CIS 122, um, introductory programming in Python. So that should be a refresher. And you're expected to introduce yourself, find a study group, um, complete the course intro quiz with 100%, um, lab one on your own, which is installation, and quiz one. And um, complete the above by Tuesday of week two to avoid being marked as a no-show from the course. Um, and then week two, we're going to look at data types in more detail. Week three, we're going to review con control structures, which are if-then-else statements mostly, um, and loops. And week four, we're going to start talking about functions and modularity. Week five, we're going to look at data structures, including um, tuples, lists, and dicts in Python. Um, week six, we're going to start working in object-oriented programming. Week seven, we're going to learn how to talk to a database to fetch information. And then we're going to use what we learned in week six to wrap the information in objects, so lists of objects. Um, week eight, we're going to talk about how to write GUI programs. Those are programs with graphical user interfaces. We'll learn about the tkinter module for being able to write user interfaces, as well as PyGubu and PyGubu Designer which give you a what you see is what you get tool for laying out user interfaces. Um, week uh, nine is also on GUI programming. Um, so it's a big topic. So we're spending two weeks on that. There are actually two labs though. Um, and then in week 10, we're gonna look at some data analysis um, using um, Pandas and uh, uh, Matplotlib. So that's what we're going to be covering this term. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to either send me email or if they're of general interest, post them to the discussion board. And I uh, look forward to working with you this term.